Good morning. Welcome to Roll Off Kitchen, fun in the kitchen. Today we're going to make one of our very favorite things. It's a soup that's made out of everything that you can pick up at the grocery store and everything you might have just almost not fresh enough that you want to cook them and eat a bag of beans that's or whatever. That's the soup that tastes so good and plus keeps my sugar level down. That's right. And also when I'm on a diet, which is often... I find that if I make a big, huge pot of this, this is garlic from our garden. The people who had this house before planted garden gar garlic, and um, so every once in a while I can go out and dig up a big clove of garlic, and so that's a huge clove of garlic. And then I'm going to do this. Now remember how we had the, uh, really, oh dear, this is a, an onion that's, well, this is okay, this is what's showing um, what works. We're going to put this, um, this onion in the soup as well. I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to have the um, I'm going to, um, saute it, not fry it, but saute it a little bit in the, um, I'm going to saute it in our great big soup pot. You know, I was saying something a minute ago and I over talked to myself. Also, what's new? Um, anyway, I was going to say I fix it for a diet, but Ron eats it so much that he gets healthy. We both get healthy. All the vitamins are not cooked away. We don't cook the dickens out of the soup, but we do cook it over several days. We cook it once and we eat it. And then we heat it up and we eat it again. So you don't want to cook, overcook it on the first time around. Now, this is a big onion. I cut off all the bad parts, all the part that was started turning brown. We don't eat that part, but you certainly doesn't, don't have to throw away the whole onion. Well, it's warm food. Right? Yes. It's fine. It's worms even like onions, huh? Oh, the worms, yes. Oh, and we're, we showed yesterday, we have a little clip on, the, on here, if you want to see it, on, on composting. Because we started yesterday, and then we ran out of time, and so uh, we started up today. And today we're going to also go out into the garden. Some of you don't have a garden, you live in an apartment. Yeah, That's, so you're holding your fingers, uh, Bill, safe. I don't want oh, you. was I holding him safe? Okay, I hope so. Let's go over here. What I was going to say is, even if you don't have room for a garden that you think, oh, I have to have an acre for a garden or a big yard, you don't need that. Um, our son Sam, one time, uh, when they when he first married, I'm going to heat this olive oil up. See, you want to see how that looks? I just put a little olive oil in there. Okay. Um, he married, and they were living in San Francisco in an apartment on a third-story apartment. Well, out their back window was a little patio that they shared with the neighbor. He asked the neighbor if it was okay to put a garden there. They put, Ron went over, they put black plastic, I think it was, down on the, isn't that what you put on the, on the, on the, the deck? The deck, uh, it was a cement deck, I think. And then they got uh, like two by six or something boards mm. and built a raised bed, filled it up with, took up three stories, all this dirt, and they had the most prolific garden and the sun would only be on there for a short time during the middle of the day and then go down because San Francisco is not always the sunniest. Uh, just proof you can have a garden anywhere. That was, that was the point, yes. Now, we happen to live in a, a neighborhood where we have a little bit of a yard, so that's good. We used to live in the country where we had a lot of yards. But I must say, every place that we've lived, we have had a garden of some sort. Only because You can have it in a pot, a flower pot. Now, you don't want to go out and buy an expensive garden, uh, flower pot, but you can go and get a, um, a flower, uh, flower pot garage sale, perhaps, or um, what's another place? Uh, go to the, um, behind someone's house, go to the garden, go to the garden shop and ask if you can have one of those black uh, things. I don't know, they might sell them to you. Most people are getting those, uh, giving them away. And they're a black pot, about a five gallon, I think it is, three gallon pot. Five gallon would be even better. Uh, now I'm cutting off the ends of these celeries. These are some celery sticks that we made for something the other day. And the ends are dark, and I don't like the dark ends. So I'm cutting those off. As I said, you don't want to overpower your soup with too much of anything. That means too much celery, too many onions, something else. Anyway, you get yourself one of those black pots, and you get a, a big bag of whatever they call it, a, so many square foot bag of um, potting soil. And you can have a nice little bag. Get several of those around in your, in your yard or outside your back door, you know, or down by the uh, wherever. If you don't, just have something, have some herbs in the window. It's always good to see things growing, particularly food that, that feeds us. And the herbs are so good. I've always got something in my window. Right now I've got a Christmas cactus, and I've got a begonia over here. That I have a big begonia, so I always take a little clipping of it in case it freezes outside. I put it under a little bit of shelter that it should freeze. I don't want it to, um, I'm going to put these in the bowl. 
I don't want them to lose the whole plant. That's my celery. Now, I want you to see, we're not taking a long time in doing this either. I'm washing those. Everything, every bit of our scraps are going into this compost pile. I don't have to peel most things. And we're not going to put rice or potatoes or, or um, pasta in any of these. If you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could make it into a minestrone, which is just exactly what this is, with a little bit of different flavoring. And you, uh, it's garlic and onion and veggies. And then you can put your cooked pasta, this is what I recommend, cooked pasta in the bowl, and then pour your soup over it. Okay, I'm not like to cook them big. You don't have to cut everything small. Let's see how this is looking. Well, you know what, I want them a little more yellow. When you're cooking onions, so I'm putting this, this when you're, when you're, um, when you're preparing celery. So uh, it looks like uh, one bucket's for the worms and the other one's for us, huh? That you got it. One's for the worms, one's for us. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I'm going to take and put a bunch of carrots in here. Sometimes I cook, put the carrots cut in half. Today I think I'll just do it that way, but it's certainly fine to do. I'm going to take a head of cabbage. If you're making a small amount, because you're not sure, just use a half of cabbage. But um, we eat this stuff so prolifically that I like to, and I just kind of throw away those outer leaves, especially if they look like they have anything. You want to make sure that the, from growing in the garden, that no dirt has gotten in between the leaves. Okay? So let's just, in the cabbage, I just cut like this. I didn't run this. I didn't sharpen this knife, which means that it's a little bit harder to cut through. And you know, we don't need to see the whole cabbage being cut. In fact, if you wanted to take those little carrots and cut them, that would be fine. I'm going to stick this over here. Let me show you a couple of these. You could cut the, the zucchini. That was zucchini, by the way. Did I mention that was zucchini? No, I don't think you did. Yeah, zucchini is also an Italian squash. This is the best way to use things that perhaps you or your kids don't like. I'm sure they're going to like this. You could do this. Make sure to keep your fingers tucked in. Remember how we talked about that the other day? This takes not very long. You see how that is? It can just be big chunks because they're going to be nice and soft. And if they're not, they're even. it's even better. A little crunch to your soup is, is a good thing. Uh, now, what I really like, this is the challenge. Cabbage is something most people say, oh, I don't know, maybe cold slaw in the summer, but I don't know. Um, broccoli is one thing. Now, this broccoli, I'm not sure that I'll even use because it's pretty bad. But that's something to use. A beet. How often do you ever fix beets? And you get a can of beets. Which, by the way, this soup can be made with all canned vegetables. You don't have to use fresh ones. Um, you can use a frozen or canned. I just find that the fresh are sort of fun to, to look like you know what you're doing when you go to the grocery store and people are walking around and you pick up, um, well, that was, this is a, uh, a root of a parsnip. Whoever buys parsnip? But they're at the store. So you buy a parsnip and people say, look at her, she's buying a parsnip. Wonder what she's going to do with that. You don't have to tell them. You're going to put it in soup. This is a, um, a rutabaga, okay, and a turnip. The turnip has purple. The rutabaga has this purple. Any vegetable that has red in it, and these are the red ones, has a lot of antioxidants, and that's what's healthy for you. I'm going to take you outside in a moment and show you what else is outside for you to see, okay?